Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Jeff Teague. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. Today I'm going to tell you more about the RAV4 that you're looking at or that you've just purchased. We're looking at the 2021 RAV4 XLE Premium. Holla! Holla! This is so exciting, it deserves a double holla. That's right. So, do you have questions about the car you just bought? Why did you buy an XLE Premium? And what if you're researching it? Is this the car for you? I'm going to show you how to use features, buttons, controls, dials on the inside, show you features on the outside and how to use them, and then we'll talk about some performance and how you might use this in real world driving. I hope this video is helpful. It's going to be a long one, so buckle up. First of all, let's talk about the XLE Premium itself. Why did you purchase this one? Why are you looking at this one? You may be interested from the XLE versus the XLE Premium. You might be interested in the upgraded 19-inch alloy wheels. Maybe, just maybe, you want Softex interior versus fabric. Maybe you want a standard moonroof. Maybe you want power liftgate. Those are all things that are standard from the factory on XLE Premium. One thing I'm going to do, start off with the interior. This is the EA40, the beige interior. You can also get gray interior. You can also get black interior. Those could all be good choices. And then there's my USB cable that I'm going to use for Apple CarPlay. And I want to show you this brochure. We'll just grab it right here. And then we're going to focus in on XLE Premium. I'll be showing you standard equipment. So you'll be seeing these as I go through the video. And then I'm going to also show you some upgraded options. This is a good way to do it so you get coming attractions. So take a look at exterior features you might see on this one. I'm at the park. You'll be hearing the sounds of joy and laughter. Does anyone remember laughter? Here are the options of package. You could get the weather package. Guess what? This one has it. You could get the Audio Plus and JBL. This one has it, 11 speakers, folks. And then this one does not have it, but you can also get the tech package on it, which is the digital rear view mirror, and then front and rear parking assist with automated braking and the wireless charging. Let's show the three different compartments you can get on the interior so you can kind of get a lay of the land here. I love that all weather cargo tray right there. Just getting a feel for things, right? Storage, there's charging back here, plugins, JBL speaker, tonneau cover. Now let's look at the back seats. Each of these seats is either more forward or more back, so you can adjust it to give yourself more or less legroom. That sounds elementary, but these are all tips that you can use to kind of free up space. And then we're going to go through this one more time. Hey, there's me. I'm using my iPhone 11 Pro right now. No, wait. Yeah, no, it's an 11 Pro. My wife has the 12 Pro. She has better than me. No fair. Holla. All right, so take a look at that. Soft tech seating. And of course, it has a standard moonroof. That's why you got an XLE Premium, maybe. First thing I'm going to do is do an exterior tour with features. This is a power liftgate, which means you can open and close it by power. It could be up here with this button, just like that. There's also an OS handle here and an OS handle here. Hopefully you won't need it. Hang on! Oh, bleep! Anyway, you can also shut it and then... Here's your backup camera, rear wiper. It's also got two different chrome pipes. It's single exhaust, but you'll see two chrome pipes. They're designed to look really sharp and they match the interior, the chrome highlights that you see with your badging. So I'm also gonna show you how you can go ahead and turn the power lift gate on and how you can turn it off. Let's do that. We are inside the car, and what you wanna do is you wanna scroll across your multi-information display. I'm using my power driver seat right now to adjust. So we're gonna use this right here to toggle through our keypad, which is the multi-information display. So let's go right through it here. I'm gonna reset my mileage. If you ever wanna reset your MPG, just to see how you're doing on a trip, just hold that down and that'll reset it. So we're gonna go across, each one of these is what I call a filing 
cabinet or a file folder in a filing cabinet. So let's go across and we're going to go to this one right here, settings. So we're going to go scrolling down, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Okay, vehicle settings, hold that down. PBD, power back door. So now we're just going to go through, is it off? Maybe it's on. Okay, so it's on. You're opening adjustment. That's the height. Do you want it at its tallest height? Lower, lower. Again, I'm just scrolling. Lower, lower, just like that. I'd like to have it there. And then what's the volume that you want? Just keep pushing that. We'll do it the highest volume. So now let's take a look at the profile here. One thing to know is this is an all due redesigned in the past couple years, 2019. It's got a tall, sturdy frame. Some people would call it sportier, more rugged, tougher. It appeals to a lot of different types of people. Ah, I hear that plane. Going off the rails on a crazy plane. Ozzy would hate me for that. Anyway, remember it's got 19 inch alloy wheels. It also has 12 inch disc brakes in the front disc brakes in the back they're 11.1 inches good stopping power long lasting and the fuel it's going to be a 14.5 gallon fuel tank which is 28 in the city 35 on the highway combined of 30 so that's kind of a template and you can judge that your miles per gallon obviously is going to jump up and down based on if you're an aggressive driver more of a lead foot like me sorry or more of a conservative average driver. And then if you're driving in the cold, maybe you're going up hills, your terrain, that kind of stuff. This has smart key push button start from the smart key. Another plane. They're everywhere. I always feel like a plane is watching me. Okay, so we're gonna lock it. And then when we walk up to the car with a key in a pocket, it automatically unlocks it. So if you got your hands full, big benefit. And then you lock it right here, two parallel lines, boom. Kind of anticlimactic, not boom, but bink. Okay, the other nice thing about this is you cannot lock your keys in your car. So if I were to throw them in here, let me see if I can do that. Now this is trust, I got nowhere to go, man. It's like officer and a gentleman. I got no place to go. So I'm gonna lock it, put the key in. It lets you know if you're walking away into a store or work, hey, your keys are in the car and it didn't lock it. Huge benefit. The other thing this one has on it, it has turn signal indicators as you saw. It's got blind spot monitor. Blind spot monitor is connected to rear cross traffic alert. And when your backup camera's on, it will alert you if somebody's coming from behind or the sides, a person or a vehicle. And I'll tell you, if you're backing out of your driveway or a grocery store parking lot, it will come in handy and it will save you from a fender bender because it could happen. What else can I tell you? Uh, it's got the roof rails. You can add crossbars if you want to. These are a gloss black. What else? It's got matte black accents and over fenders. The reason why they have those is if you're going through some tight trails and you've got brush and sticks and things that could scrape up against the paint, that might help you. Also, if anything flies off the tires, maybe it'll hit this as opposed to a midnight black metallic paint. So profile, boom, the front of the car, other than first impressions, and they mean a lot, they mean everything, right? So what do you see when you see this? You see tough and imposing. You can spot it from 100 yards away. It's got that trapezoidal signature RAV4 now front grille. It's also got the flat symbol here. That's where radar technology is housed for your Toyota safety sense. 2.0. And then it's also got a camera here that's watching for people and lanes and signs and cars and all that jazz. My hands are so dry. Ugh. So much hand sanitizer and stuff. I need to use like a lotion or a balm. A balm? Who told you to put the balm on? A uh, maestro did. A maestro? You listen to a maestro? That's preposterous. It's outrageous. It's egregious. This is the most public of all my public humiliations. Hope somebody got that reference.
It wasn't very good. <laughs> That's a great episode. Little piece of trivia here. When you're looking at a RAV4 front end, if you see no fog lights, you'll know that you have the LE model. You can spot it a mile away. But this one has fog lamps. It's got LED headlights and LED daytime running lights. The ground clearance. In other words, if there's a stump here or some brush, what can you clear? Or maybe a tight driveway where you, they've got a slope. Like in my neighborhood, sometimes they've got slopes. You gotta be careful of the ground clearance. So this one, because it has 19 inch tires, it's got 8.6 inch ground clearance. If you go with one that is an XLE, say, it's gonna be 8.4 inch ground clearance. So maybe that makes a difference to you. I'm gonna turn on the lights so you can see what's going on, what's going on. Okay, so notice, these are LED, daytime running lights are LED. These ones are not the LED lights. They still cut through the fog just fine, but they don't quite match up with that one. It's something that's just a good to know. Your car has Toyota Safety Sense. What does that mean? Safety Sense 2.0. So it means that you've got the ability to detect people during the daytime and the nighttime, bicycles during the daytime, it can pick up road signs and it can alert you when you're speeding too. It works in combination with what you see on your multi-information display. What can it pick up? It can tell you the posted speed limit sign. This is really handy. You might think it's not like, oh, I'll never use that. Trust me, you will use it. You'll look down sometimes and go, oh, I did not know it was 55. I didn't know that this road went down to 25 all of a sudden. That's gonna help you out when you need it most. You won't even know it. But it picks up stop signs, do not enter signs, and yield signs as well. It can tell you that they're approaching. I'll see if I can show that. But um, you've got dynamic radar cruise control, automatic high beams. So it switches between the big bright high beams and the low beams. If it sees a car coming, it's gonna be low beams. As soon as they leave, back up to the high beams so you can see with the best visibility. Pre-collision system. Also, what else? Lane tracing assist. This is my favorite feature. I'll tell you, I use it a lot. You wouldn't even think you'd use it. I use it a lot. It keeps you centered in your lane. This baby right up here is going to be watching for the lines, whether they're striped or solid on either side of you. If it can detect them, it will keep your car centered in the lane. Even if you look, Bob, no hands, or you're going over the first hill of a RAV4 roller coaster. Ah! <laughs> well, guess what? It's gonna keep you centered in your lane, even going around turns. If you got tight traffic, like somebody's right in front of you and the car detects it, it'll follow the pattern of the car in front of you. Couple things I wanna show you here. How do you know if your car has rain sensing wipers? See this little cutout right there? That little cutout right there, that's actually looking for precipitation. If it senses it and you have your wipers set accordingly, the wipers will come on. So that's how you know. You can spot it as you're walking up to a car. It has a standard moon roofy. Not moon roofy. Not gonna drug the car. It's not gonna drug me. Maybe I'll fall in love with it. Love potion number nine. And there's the, right there, the blind spot monitor. First thing I wanna talk about with engine performance has to do with its towing capabilities. This one can tow 1,500 pounds. If you get a RAV4 hybrid, you can tow 1,750 pounds. If you get an Adventure or a TRD, you can pull 3,500 pounds. It has a tow prep equipment package on it, which is 100 amp alternator and then an automatic transmission fluid cooler, which helps beef up the engine so that you can support what you're pulling, whether it's a camper, you have to be a small camper, maybe a trailer, something like that. But notice it's got a prop rod here. It also has soundproofing material. That's an advantage that uh, recently came on to the RAV4 gasoline versions. It was always on the RAV4 hybrid starting in 19, but this has been added, so that's good. All right, so for performance, you've got 203 horsepower and 184, 184 foot-pounds of torque. It's pretty peppy, actually, so if you haven't tried it yet, try it starting up fast from a light if you want to when it turns green or go up a hill or merge onto a highway or try to pass somebody on a two-lane country road that kind of a thing and see if it has the guts that you need it to have i find it's pretty zippy it's pretty much got the chops that you need it's matched with an eight speed automatic transmission and the suspension mcpherson struts in the front it's got multi-link rear suspension in the back and it's really tight and responsive when you go around country roads and sharp turns and winding mountain 
roads, that kind of stuff, but it's very smooth and opens up nicely. It's softer when you go straightaways, like the highway. Okay, now here's a difference. You can get this XLE Premium, maybe you've already got it, in FWD or AWD, front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Front wheel drive gives you a little bit better gas mileage. And the thing about the all wheel drive though, it's an on-demand all wheel drive system. So what that means is if you are driving and it's just dry pavement like we have here or something like that, it's gonna be front wheel drive because it's trying to give you the best efficiency and fuel economy. MPG, easy as one, two, three, it's for me. MPG, you and me, woo. Okay, but if it's slippery or snowy or a lot of rain on the road, it's going to send additional torque or power, low end power, to the back wheel so that they're all doing work and then you can get the best traction possible on the road. Now I'm gonna talk about cargo capacity. I can open it that way too, just touch that little grippy. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got behind the front row, just about 70 cubic feet of cargo volume, which is 69.8 cubic feet. And then behind the second row, 37.5. Just a little example of how the tonneau cover comes out. That way it hides Look, ma, you can't see me. Can't see me. All right, so then the tonneau cover can go there, and then you can take the tonneau cover out if you want to. I'll show you that in just a minute. But I wanna show you how you can get a little bit of extra cargo space. See how this is a nice flat surface? If you really are stacked up, you're moving your kids somewhere, or you just got a lot of gear going on, Maybe you're going to the beach. I hope you guys are going to the beach. So we, it was flat, remember? Look at the grooves down below. See how Stella got her groove back down here? All right, watch this. We guide it down into the lower section. Holla. All right, so now we've got this much more all the way, and maybe it'll help you stack something a little bit taller up. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. So now I'm gonna take this down and I'm going to show you how to store the tonneau cover. Just pops out, sort of like if you've ever had a shower tension rod in your bathroom. We're gonna pop these out, pop this out. It fits in this groove right here. and then it can store right underneath the floorboard. So maybe that'll help you out. Now I think I'll show you the temporary spare tire. Kind of doing a little Jenga or Tetris here. Take a look at this. This is a temporary spare tire. It's for temporary use. This is, let's see, what is this? This is an 18 inch tire, just so you know. Helicopter in the house. Safe travels, my friends. You know, something about my channel, if you haven't noticed, I try to make it fun because auto reviews can be kind of boring and dull and stale. And there's no reason an auto review should put you to sleep while you're trying to learn. You could fish through that manual, but let's do it this way here. It's interactive, it's fun. And then you can also leave your comments down below while you hit like and subscribe and the notification bell. And let me know what you wanna know about this car or another car, and I'll make a video about it. It's that simple. You guys are really the fuel that drives what I do. So let's shut up and fold these down. You can see my pack here. All right, so now this one here, it's not entirely flat, but to me it's close enough. Now with my microphone, if I move it too much, it's going to interfere and cause crackling. So I'm gonna try not to do that. Normally I'd treat this like a jungle gym. And then here's how you lay across it, like that. I guess you could probably sleep in here if you needed to. I'm only five foot eight. <laughs> that door was open, I didn't know that. Um, you could lay like this, I guess, but your feet would probably come out a little bit further than what you want to. But that's about the room. And as far as headroom, what can I do here? Got some room. I don't know if you'd want to sit like this, but you can do it. Some other highlights you could store down here. There's also a 12 volt circular port and then there's a light. It's an LED light. There are also tie downs here so that you can strap things down or bungee it. 
things that might roll around or shift that you don't want to in transit. Look at that, JBL, perfect sound, one of 11 going on in here. Concert-like performance, baby. And then I wanna show you the angle. You gotta do this exactly flat, otherwise I'd, I don't help you at all here. So there's a little bit of a slope. And then notice how when you get the all-weather tray or mat, it goes all the way up the back of the second row and you can pop them out for those overhead child safety latches. So there are provisions put in place for just about everything. Now what I wanna show you is how you can adjust the back seat. It's set up like this. I think most people will see there's good headroom, leg room, shoulder room. Okay, so what you do is you can have it like this. Okay, like that, or you can lift it up and then go back. And you can see based on the other angle that that's the angle of slope. So if that helps you, it's right here. You can also use it to put it down. There's the default. Okay, let's look at this, the armrest. I kinda know it's, it's comfy, right? Cup holders, we're gonna look for bottle holders too. All right, see that? It's squishy, it's comfortable. There's a bottle holder. We gotta know this stuff, guys, we gotta know. And then look at this, if you get all weather mats, it's a one piece design. A Little bit of a hump there, humpty hump. And then there's no pocket here, but there is a pocket here for books and things like that and iPads while you're traveling. It's got rear USB ports, two of them, right like there. And then we've got rear vents. And let's just look, all that industrial equipment there. They're doing work, my friends. They're going places, they're moving forward. Oh wait, that's Toyota. All right, so that's the front part of it. I'm gonna take a time out and show you the window sticker here. XLE Premium Front Wheel Drive made in Ontario. It could be made in Japan also. See the two? That means it's made in Canada. If you see a J, it's made in Japan. Little clue there. Really good safety ratings. Here's the fuel mileage. It goes down a little bit if you get the on-demand all-wheel drive. Just remember that, but you're trading it off for a series of features and benefits that might help you where it snows a lot or rains a lot. So here we go. See, it's got the start-stop front wheel drive, eight speed automatic transmission. Here's what's in the Toyota Safety Sense. Also pay attention to the eight different airbags, blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert, and safety connect. I'm gonna tell you about safety connect. Yeah, yeah I will. LED headlights, look at that. Super chrome finish, power lift gate. Okay, this has a seven inch touchscreen standard. It's Toyota's, we'll call it the base model, audio system, it's audio. Just audio, it's not called Entune, it's audio. It's got dual zone air conditioning with rear air vents. Notice that it has Sirius XM, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. It also does Amazon Alexa. Power driver seat, not power passenger. Has a smart key. And then we're gonna go to the pricing and the features, the options. Here we go. From the factory in Canada, 30,150. Here's the weather package. It's got heated steering wheel, heated front seats memory seats with your power driver seat and then rain sensing wipers along with the de-icer so it can de-ice or melt around the wipers so that you're not covered in thick ice when you're trying to clear off your windshield especially in the morning this one upgrades to audio plus with jbl so it upgrades those speakers to the 11 speaker subwoofer amplifier it's pretty kick and sound really but it increases the touch screen by one inch to seven uh, or eight, so this one's eight. It's got the backup camera with the grid lines, and then it's got the connected services, remote connect. I love remote connect because it can tell you when you're out of gas. It can tell you how many miles left you have before you run out of gasoline. It can tell you if you left your windows open, your trunk open, your moonroof open. It can locate your vehicle if you lose it in a parking lot. So much it can do, guys. It's really, really a huge benefit for you. And then safety connect. It's like a call system where 
if you get in an accident, they will call you and the airbags go off. They will call you right in your car to make sure you're okay. If you don't answer, they'll send emergency personnel. They can also locate stolen vehicles. Good stuff. So we're going to get it delivered. 33,970 with those options. And then it has the all weather mat, plain. There it is. Plain. I went to the park for a change of place, but also I wanted to get away from the planes. No, nope, not going to happen. Not going to do it. Not going to happen. Clear paint protection, door package, and the LED interior light upgrade. This one here with all those options, 34 seven. Now I'm gonna show you some leg room. It's gonna have a lot of leg room cause I got the seat all the way up. I've also got this one reclined. Very comfortable though. Each of the three seats gives you an adequate portion, one quarter portion. A full portion, not one quarter portion. And then this is with the seat forward. And then that's reclined. Remember, I'm five foot eight, so headroom, it's good for me, but if you're taller, you'll wanna check it out. This is with the seat still all the way back. I got room, pretty comfy, I think you'll like it. Now it's time to start talking about some features on the inside. First thing we'll show you for our demo, it's a one touch window. Let's check the back. It's also a one touch window. It goes all the way down. One touch up. Okay, there's me. And then remember this has soft text. You can get the beige that you see here. You can also get the gray or the black. I like that it's kind of a combo of dark gray, some black, some metallic, a little bit of everything here. And you've got two different memory seats. All you need to do, we'll show you how this works. Basically, push one and it's going to adjust. Let's check this. So it happens when you push number one or number two. Memory seats. That way, tall husband and wives and short husband and wives, you're all going to be comfortable with the push of a button. Let's check this out. It goes up. Let's see, let's make it go down all the way first. Goes up quite a bit. You can also twist it. Move it forward, backward, and then this is the back of the seat. You wanna see how far back it goes? Pretty far. All right, yeah, that's good. All right, and let's check out the lumbar support. I don't know if you can see this or not. Let's try it. It's alive, it's alive. If you got a poor back, that might really help you. You can mix it up on trips. I like that. All right, so now what do we got here for buttons? This is the fuel door. Let's open that up. Take it out. Store it right here. You can use just regular 87. If you choose to use higher grade, you're more than welcome to, but it's not necessary. Ah! Ah! Looks like the Sarlacc pit. Look out, Boba Fett. Look out. All right. Okay, watch this. You gotta tighten it one click. If not, the check engine light might come on because you don't have a tight seal. One click. There you are, all better, one click. That's from Adventures in Babysitting where the kid Brad gets a stitch, one stitch. My first chance to be in a knife fight and all I get is one stitch. One stitch, all better. This is the heated seat, or I'm sorry, heated steering wheel right here, comes on right about here. Then we've got our windshield wiper de-icer, that's how you know it's on. Automatic high beams, they're active, they're not. They're active, they're not. And then what comes up? Let's see, will that show up yet? I don't know if it will. I don't think it'll come on yet. Okay, so there's the high beams right there. So you gotta have it in high beam position, pushed it forward, and have that on. 
this is the brightness of the dash. A lot of people don't know that, where you can get that to brighten up your dash. It's right here. Little storage pocket for whatever. A lot of people forget that you can turn this on and off. This one over here, it's sort of the forgotten vent. All right, this turns on your fog lamps, off, on, off, on. Daytime running lights off. If you don't want to have your daytime running lights on, you can do that. These are, I guess studies show that you can be seen on the road about 11% better than cars that don't have it. So I figure any chance, even during the daytime, to be seen better, do it. Especially if you've got a, a different colored car that's hard to see. Auto high beams, or I'm sorry, auto lights, parking lights, and then on. And then that's not high beam, that's high beam. Then on the steering wheel, we've got, remember that goes through the keypad. This gets rid of a message. So see, I don't have the car turned on and I've got the door open. So if I push this, it's gonna go away. The flip side or the negative is it's going to come back. It's gonna keep reminding you over and over and over. Let's push it again. See what that does? Gets rid of the message. Okay, that's how you pick up a call when you're paired. That's how you hang up a call when you're paired. Voice command, we can give the car a voice command if we want to. Before you start, I don't know what you tell it. The available Tune to Sirius XM 80s on 8. 80s on 8. And then this is the volume. This is your radar cruise control settings, lane departure alert. This is to turn the cruise system on. That turns it on and then that sets it down here. That sets your speed. Just like that. And then this goes up and down. You can tweak it from 76, 77, 78, 79, 78, 77, 76. And then this is going through your preset stations and then this is AM, FM, satellite radio, Bluetooth, and back again. Eight inch touchscreen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Amazon Alexa, pretty easy. If you wanna change your home screen, see it has one, two, three different pieces. If I wanna expand audio, I can do that. It's touch, remember? So let's go back to home. It's three, what if I wanna change it to more? We go to menu and setup, and then I want to Bring my hand down here, customize home screen. How do you want to change the layout? I want to change it to four. What do you want? Audio, eco, phone, clock, okay. So let's go back to home. And look, now it's four different pieces. Menu can do things like that. Audio, I'm gonna show you this one up a little bit closer because I want to go through sound. Okay, this is how you adjust your treble. I like three treble, three mid, two bass, and then the fader, how do you want that? Do you want it all the way to the back, to the center, to the front, or move it over here? When I used to do road trips and my little kids were sleeping, I'd put it up here and over here so I could hear it, but it wouldn't bother them. Flip side, when you want your kids to have the radio, just put it down all the way to the, to the back. They can hear it, but you won't really hear it as much. And then auto sound levelizer. Do you want it on? That means the radio volume is gonna go up the faster you go. Cause our engine races, you hear the engine a little bit more, but the radio compensates. It adjusts accordingly. You like it? I like it. Now, if I wanna set up my phone, I'm not gonna do it in this car, but you just push phone and it says, there are no Bluetooth devices registered. Would you like to, you just do yes and then set up Bluetooth on your phone. Just push on and it'll walk you through it. Whether you have an Android or whether you have an iPhone, it'll walk you right through it. So remember, push Bluetooth to turn that on on your phone and then just push phone and then yes. Easy peasy. You're also gonna have a trial of Wi-Fi Connect so you can set up Wi-Fi Connect. You can also do Remote Connect too. That's a one-year trial there. And then you go to the Toyota app on your store, on your phone, go to Toyota app. Okay, and then you can, they'll send you an email to initialize it and then you have to put a code in here by going to apps and then authorize it, put in the code and it should be all set up from that point. I love Remote Connect, you will too. This right here is your hazard light. Turn that off. 
And then if I want to turn on the air on my dual temperature controls, just hit any fan. Blows out pretty darn good too. See that it's synced up. That's because sync is pushed. So if you want to be at a different temperature than the driver, do that. And then one person's hot, one person's cold. It's like a McDLT. There's your front defroster, your rear defroster. This changes where your air is going to come up. And this is your eco air. So it doesn't need to air people in the back. It doesn't need to cool them or heat them up in the back if you don't want them to. It saves energy and efficiency. Here's low heat. There's high heat for the passenger. You can turn the traction control on and off. See, it's off right now. That's if you want to do burnouts or if you're stuck in the snowbank and you want to rock, you can use that. This right here is the engine start stop. So what happens is at a traffic light, if you're stopped, the car will shut the engine off. So it's saving fuel while you're there for two, three, four, five minutes. Maybe it's a longer light and you want to save some fuel. You can just do that, but it kind of kicks in as you're starting up. So you may want to turn it off. Some people do. If that's the case, see, I did that. I turned it off and it says A. So if it doesn't say it, then it's going to be automatically on. That's the default folks. I just wanted to show you if you put your foot on the brake and start, it's going to start the engine. But let's say you're here like me, you just want to eat lunch. If you just want to eat lunch and listen to the radio, have the windows down, but you don't want the car started, you can push this a couple times without your foot on the brake. Okay. See that? Now the accessories are on, but you don't have the engine running. I feel like this is probably self-explanatory, but the moonroof function right here, you can either vent it. It's like ordering at Starbucks. I'll take the venti or you can actually shut that and then you can just open the whole thing. You can open it partially. or all the way, however you want it. You hear the lights on. That's the LED interior light upgrade. If you have this on, then your lights are gonna come on when you open up the door, just like that. Remember this has the LED interior light upgrade. And then this is safety connect. You have to actually open the lid. Don't push it unless you really need it because personnel will come on. They'll say, welcome to Safety Connect. Is this an emergency? I don't really want to get into that right now because I don't want to spook anybody. So, and then this is for sunglasses. Mm -hmm. It's not an auto dimming rear view mirror and it does not have garage door openers. Okay. Light. And then it's got a slider here so you can block out as much sun as possible with the systems provided. This is where we're going to go through the multi-information display, but I am going to turn on the car because I can get some good information here. There's the startup. Kind of cute. All right, so let's start over here. We're going to scroll through and we'll be right here at the main one. This is where you get information about how far till you run out of gasoline, what type of average MPG you're getting. It also tells you what you're getting real time for fuel mileage. So let's scroll down. I'm gonna use it right here. It tells you how far till you run out of gasoline. It does eco driving too. It tells you when you're getting the best gas mileage based on how you're driving. And then there's our big MPH. Let's go over more. This is for your lane departure alert, radar cruise control, and lane tracing. So, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the cruise active set a speed and then watch this i'm going to turn on the lane departure alert and see it says lta that's the lane tracing assist it's on because i have the lane departure alert on and the cruise is active so those both have to happen that's what keep you keeps you centered in your lane remember just like that and then here's how we adjust our cruise control watch this do you want to be between you and the car in front of you. That's what this camera right here is doing. It's gonna adjust the distance. 
between you and the car in front of you. Do you want a big wide distance, a medium distance, or a short distance? All right, so now we're gonna go to the next one, the radio. This tells us, come on baby, make it hurt so good. Sometimes love don't feel like it should. You make it, shut up, Jeff. All right, so let's go to the next one here. This gives us trip information like trip time, trip distance, and then settings. That's gonna be a big one. The next one here that alerts you, it'll be orangish if maybe you have a low tire pressure or maybe you need maintenance due soon. So let's go back to settings. This is where we're gonna get a lot of our juice. So this is lane tracing assist. Okay, watch this. Hold it down. Do you want your lane center on or off? Do you want your steering assist on or off? How sensitive do you want it to be? Do you want the sway warning on? What that does is that tells you, the car knows if you've been outside of your lane, like you're veering left and right and left and right over a certain period of time, it'll say, hey, do you want to take a break? Give me a break. Give me a break. And it'll ask you to break off a piece of that kit kit bar. Pre-collision system, do we want it off? See, it puts you a warning. Are you sure you want to have pre-collision system off? Are you sure? Okay, we're gonna have it on. This is blind spot monitor. Let's push that to have it on. It alerts you right where it's supposed to, right here. I'm gonna turn it off and on again. And then we'll go over here. It alerts you. That's where you should be looking to see if anybody's there. Rear cross traffic alert. Do you want it off? RCTA, rear cross traffic alert. I think we want it on. Remember, that's when you're backing up. It'll tell you if there's somebody there or not. Road sign assist, RSA. Luckily, that acronym is also included with a picture because then we know, oh yeah, that's a sign. So we're gonna turn it off. It's off. Now watch this, we're gonna hold this one down. Okay, notification method. When you see a road sign, when the car sees it, do you wanna be notified above the speed limit? Visual or audio, visual and audio, others. Okay, that's your speed notification and then other notifications. So we're gonna go back and then notification level. This is for your speed, watch this. Do you wanna be notified Maybe an audio cue when you're one mile over the speed limit. This might be really great if you're training your kids to drive and you don't want them to go anything above three or five. It'll give them a, a visual or an audio cue to let them know. All right, I think that's super cool. Also, the speed limit will show up right here. It'll be surrounded by a little thin orange line. It lets you know it comes on if you're above the speed limit that you have set. So that's another way that you can be notified. Uh, I think that's, yeah, I feel like that's it. Oh no, that's not it actually. If you want to have your rain sensing wipers, remember those are up here. If you want to have that on, then with your wipers, you want to have it set. I believe it's to auto. That's the back. So you want to have it on auto, okay? That'll be for your rain sensing wipers and what you do is you actually that's missed that's off let's see it's the one right before the low that's the fast that's the low then we've got auto so that's auto right there okay remember it's the one right above on the stick low regular wipers and if you have it on there then it will start coming on if it starts to rain this right here my usb cord is connected and i'm going to plug it into my phone you can't see that but plug here all right so do we want apple carplay let's always enable it android auto similar it'll ask me on my phone which it did right now do i want to have it active i do there, there's Apple CarPlay, so that's where I am. I'm in the park right now, okay? I like that. And then you can do Waze. This is Waze. You can do SiriusXM. These are the last three apps that you used, but what if I wanna see, my son's calling me. Sorry, didn't mean to screen you. So these are the last common apps. It tells me if I have a message, it'll play a message. 
I have Waze put on there because it's on my phone. I have Sirius XM put on there because it's on my phone. Same thing with Google Maps. So those are the most common ones that you might add. And then you can also do this type of a thing. Everyone, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please follow me on Instagram at Toyota Jeff one I'm on Facebook at Toyota Jeff. I write for Torque News, torquenews.com slash Toyota. Hope you like my stories. I would love it if you watch. I would really love it if you hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell. That would help me out a lot. I'm on a quest to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2021, so you guys can help. If you want, feel free to help, encourage family, friends, coworkers, anybody, strangers in the grocery store, have them subscribe to Toyota Jeff. I'd really appreciate it. We'll do a big giveaway at 100,000. I think that would be only fair. Thanks everyone so much. I really appreciate it. Write down in the comment section what you think of RAV4, the XLE Premium, maybe a different trim level. Write down ideas that you have for future videos. I'll see you guys next time.